how's it going? So, you may be wondering what this big old thing is. Well, we're revisiting the 3D metal printer. Uh, I didn't have any intention of doing this when I posted the last video, but I got a ton of comments suggesting that I try putting a TIG welder on it, and it got me interested, man. So, today we're gonna try and put a TIG welder on my 3D metal printer and see if it improves anything. Open the castle doors here. Ooh. Now then, first things first, the enclosure. Uh, I've cleaned it up as much as I can without using a grinder. It's covered in spatter. <laughs> I'm not just gonna use the torch's argon, because I'll run out of argon a quarter of the way through a print. And I'm starting to get embarrassed how often I'm going to the gasket and spot to get new argon. So, I'm gonna seal this thing up as good as I can and just fill it up with argon and hopefully I won't need to be using it as much. As you may be able to imagine from the last project, I'm sick of welding thin metal. So. I'm just gonna use silicone. Now to seal up the doors, I've just installed this weather stripping. I'll probably just hold it closed with some self tappers or something to keep it good and tight. Now as for these fan holes, I've cut out these little things on the plasma cutter. I just cut the weather stripping in half and installed a little ring on there. And these just go on just like that. The only number 10 screws I have are super long. The only number 10 nuts I have are lock nuts. So, this is fun. Now I think that's about everything that has to happen on the enclosure, so let's move on to the machine. There's a few things we need to change. One, we plugged up those fan holes, so we need a water-cooled base. Two, obviously we need to mount the TIG torch. We also need a wire feed, and I'm probably gonna use the same MIG gun thing that I had on the previous iteration, just have it poking out towards the bottom of the torch. So, starting with the thing that annoys me most, I'm cutting this nasty old thing off. Oh God. Look at that nasty sludge. Ooh. Now that we got this cut off and ground down flat, we gotta start figuring out our water cooling block. I've got one sheet of aluminum that's big enough. It's real nasty. For the other side, I don't have any pieces big enough, so I'm just gonna have to do a dang good butt weld. Hey, you guys know how me and TIG welding get along. So, wish me luck. Gee, you don't wanna see this. Got my plates cut out, got my butt joint on here. Now, we need to transfer the holes from this onto here. And then I have these little standoffs to hold the two apart. Jesus. Then with just a little bit of persuasion, these guys can be installed in the aluminum plate. I got these guys welded in. Now I need to make the channels that will uh, coerce the water into spreading across the whole plate. So basically, I kind of roughly drew it out on here. I'm just gonna make a maze using these pieces. Kind of like that. If I had three hands, I'd show you the whole maze, but you know. Let me weld this all in place and you can see what it's supposed to look like. All right, got me a little bit of a labyrinth. Here's my inlet and outlet, and the water will have to go all the way around the plate to get to the outlet. Hopefully that works. Now, for the fun job of getting the top plate installed. Now, we can test for leaks and cool this thing off all at once. Come on. Oh man, that's hot. And that tubing is very melted. Taking a while to get to the outlet, that's kind of a good sign. All right, so it flows. Surprisingly, there were no leaks. Can you believe it? So now I gotta grind all this flat so that it makes as much contact with the bed as possible. Now then, to mount this guy on this guy, I went ahead and bent up this little bracket from a piece of flat bar. That'll hold that on there just fine. Now we need to figure out where to mount our wire feed and how that's gonna work. So I went ahead and mounted a cup on here just to get an idea of where 
this thing's gonna be pointing. We gotta figure out how to get this liner pointing right down towards the puddle, which I, uh, I'm gonna say it's like right here. Hmm. Alrighty, here's how this is gonna work. I've just sandwiched this fitting between a piece of heat shrink and the gun liner. So that ain't gonna move. Well, that ain't gonna move much. Then if I have to reposition this, the holes are a little bit oversized so I can jiggle it around just a little bit, but that's something we won't learn until later. Alrighty, got everything installed. Got our water cooler block. You can see the tubing in the back for that. Torch is on and the wire feed. With the torch, I didn't want to take apart a perfectly good TIG torch, so I kind of just like bent it back. A little hokey. Oh, and we got our little limit switch pusher right there as well. Now then, on to the electronics. Now I just need to decipher what the hell I was thinking when I put this together. So, all the Ender 3 stuff can stay the same. I don't know that we're gonna need the 12 volts anymore, besides for the LEDs, which seems silly to have this power supply for it, but eh, if I don't gotta move it, then I don't gotta move it, right? I'm not gonna need the stepper drive anymore, unless I decide to drive this with a stepper. I'm no longer gonna have the welder to control the wire feed, so I'm gonna have to do that with the Arduino. I don't know, I'll be back with this put together, or at least with a plan put together. Alrighty, got my electronics sorted. As you can see, the stepper drive is gone, and in its place I have a little transistor. As you also may be able to see, it's no longer an Arduino Uno, I've swapped it for a Nano. Because there's no point in using an Uno here. Couldn't possibly be because I shorted 24 volts over the Arduino and fried it. I'd have to be an idiot to do that. I'd have to be a real idiot to do it twice. <sighs> anyway, everything's just about the same as the old setup. It's still controlled through this relay, which I'm going to control using a fan output M106 and M107 from the Ender 3. But now, one state just turns everything off. The other state will flick a relay to turn the torch on, and then it will start dabbing the motor. And I just used a for loop for this, no more fancy curve, but it's gonna dab quicker and quicker. Let me show you. This is one state, and then I've changed the code to greatly exaggerate how quickly this changes and moves, just for the video. You can see, I turn it on, it starts dabbing. Now, I don't know if you can hear it, it gets quicker and quicker. Until it's almost continuous. There's a 100 microsecond delay between dabs at the quickest state. When it's actually running, I'm gonna have that ramp up a whole lot slower. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and install the enclosure on top of this thing and we can give it a test. I stuck a piece of acrylic in the bottom hole because last time I ended up running it with the door open the whole time because the shots through the tinted glass sucked. So, this is your window, this is my window. Beauty. Now, I don't want to wait for silicone to dry again and I just passed these wires through, so... Hot glue. So I'm not going to be using my nice welder for this. I'm going to be using this old thing. This is my Everlast Power Pro 256 Si. It's a multi-process machine, which is why I don't use it. It has a um, tendency to blow up. So hopefully that doesn't happen on this run. But it actually has a water-cooled torch. So I'm just cutting into the loop for the torch and adding our water cooling block for the bed to it. And hopefully it can keep up. We'll see. All right. Try number one, I'm just gonna be doing some circles to start. Yeah, we gotta see if everything's working. I'm just gonna run the argon through like normal using the machine. I'm not gonna fill the container yet because there's gonna be a lot of inspecting and adjusting to start. <laughs> After some initial tests, I realized this thing is not poking in the right spot. We need to be real close to the puddle. So I made this little piece out of aluminum and it fits on a number five cup. I'll be able to clamp it down with a number eight screw. So the gun liner will poke through this hole right here and be right up next to the tungsten. Now I don't know if you can see that, but our tungsten is right here and the wire is right there. So hopefully this works better. 
we're getting there. May not look like it, but it sure looks like it under the welding hood. So I was noticing that the wire was having trouble getting into the puddle. So I've drilled another hole in this mounting bracket. So now the whole thing is tilted a little bit and these guys should meet in the middle. Give it a whack. Would you look at that? That is beautiful. Everything was going swimmingly until the tungsten got stuck, but that's just a layer height problem. So I'm gonna adjust my settings, give it one more test, and then I think we can print something cool. So I don't think aluminum was the right thing to make that part out of. Oh, geez. <laughs> I went ahead and made the same part out of steel. I'm gonna give this one more test run and then we'll print something fun. All right, I think this thing's ready to go. As you can see by my uh, barnacle test sheet, I'm getting sick of printing barnacles. I, I think we got the settings pretty close. I tweaked them a little bit and we're just gonna see how it goes on this full run. So what we're gonna try and do here, I wanna run it in vase mode. I'm just gonna print a cute little vase. See how that turns out now. You may notice there's a funky new limit switch in here. What's that? So, I don't know if you remember the last 3D metal printer video and my disgrace of a time lapse. Yeah! We're gonna do better than that this time. So, this limit switch goes to an Arduino Leonardo hooked up to my laptop. And the Leonardo is running the keyboard library so it can emulate keystrokes. The laptop is hooked up to this webcam. Hello. Every time that this limit switch is pressed, it'll take a picture. So now, in between each layer, the machine will do this. Eh? Now then, we need to mount this somehow. That'll do. The added benefit of doing this off my laptop is I can use screen task to cast my screen to the server so I can monitor the machine from my other computer. So. Hopefully that'll minimize the amount of butthole clenching in this whole process. Or at least I'll be clenching from afar. Now, without further ado, let's get this road on the show. All right, guys, this is the one, for real. All right, 23rd time is the charm, right? Right? 167th time's the charm, huh? 213th time is the charm, please. Try number 420. Nice. Try 957. Try number 9754. Let's go. Well, I've had quite the little nightmare here. See, in those last shots, I was kidding when I was saying try 9000 whatever. Uh, we're getting close to those numbers. <laughs> this seems to have been one of those things where you fix one problem and 10 more pop up. So let me give you the rundown on what's changed since I last saw you. So I was having issues with the wire sticking between rapid moves. So what I did is I upped this to a number seven cup that actually gets the wire a little bit further away from where the weld pool is. So every time it melts back, it melts back a little further. Also in code, I changed it so when the torch turns off, there is a delay for half a second while the wire feed is off. So that gives it time to melt back and get out of the way. That works pretty good. I've kicked the teeth out of my welder. I kept having issues with this thing, as I tend to. I kicked the front out so I could access the points better. <laughs> also, I was running this on 2T, so it was expecting a foot pedal, and it eventually just stopped working altogether. Now I have it on 4T, so in the code, every time the spindle is turned on, it just turns the relay on and off again, and then same for turning it off. And that seems to be working pretty good. The added benefit of the 4T is I can use all these funky little controls. So I've got uh, amperage ramp up and ramp down. Now the biggest issue I was having was high frequency interference from this guy starting. So, grounding. As you can see here, I jammed the external ground on the machine in with a screwdriver. Very professional. I've grounded this outer case. 
I've grounded the shielding on these wires. I've grounded the control box. Everything's grounded. And everything's grounded onto different circuits. But that wasn't even enough. So I took the control box and I moved it over here. Drastic measures. So we got shielded, grounded cable going from this to the machine. Now what I didn't take into account is the fact that those stepper drives are gonna have to push more current in order to get through those wires. So, I blew up the Ender 3 control board. Moment of silence. Now it's just one trace on the Y stepper drive. It's definitely fixable, but you know, my shaky hands aren't soldering those traces. So, I threw together a CNC driver with beefier steppers. And this is hooked up to my plasma cutter. So now the machine is running on Linux CNC. It thinks it's a mill, idiot. So as you can see, we're gonna be printing a vase. Sorry about those tool paths. Let me, let me clean those up for you. So we're gonna be printing a vase. Cross your little thingies. We're going for it. <laughs> took two full days. What do we have to show for those two days? The ugliest vase that I have ever seen. It's pretty cool this worked at all. Yeah. And you can kind of see the spiral pattern that's supposed to be in the vase, which is kind of neat. Oh, and the overhangs it was able to get are actually pretty good. That compared to the benchy that we did previously, the layers on this look much smoother. It also took twice as long, so give and take. Now there's some glaring issues here, that being the shifts in layers. Now I don't know if that's a problem of the belts warping from the UV or whatever, or a problem of um, shift one, needed more argon, shift two, bedtime. It's probably the latter. Now I could just give you that shitty vase and call this good, but I'm not happy with it, man. I want something impressive. I want something sick. So we got a few options to avoid those layer shifts. Option one, actually install limit switches on the machine. Option two, stay up with the machine. Now I don't have enough wire to actually run limit switches over to the control box, so here goes nothing. Oh, my poor health and sanity. Now this print, I'm only gonna have a time lapse for. I'm not gonna take any shots of it. That way I can actually close the machine and save some argon. So, apologies. Well, that didn't quite go how I wanted it to. Here's our new vase. It's a little bigger. You can definitely see the pattern. It is not without its problems. Ooh. But, I mean for an Ender 3, not too bad. There's something stuck in there. Can we get that thing on a little spinner? Look at that. That'll do. I wonder if it holds water. Look at that, it holds water. <laughs> Gritty. Well, was that worth an extra two days? Probably not. But I think this thing actually has potential. This came not without its own set of problems. Is it perfect? No. Is it a step forward from last time? I think so. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you guys want me to take this further. I, I think we're actually kind of getting somewhere with this. And if y'all want to watch, I, I still want to work on it. So let me know. Either way, thanks for sticking around. Leave a good old dinger. Think about subscribing and thank you for watching.